Uh, good morning. Happy Monday, TGIM. Thank God it is Monday. Man, what a weekend. I gotta take some, I gotta take some uh another break here soon. <laughs> Time off of work or something, because um I be working seven, eight, eight, nine days a week. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh today I wanted to go back in the archives and, and pull a, a morning devotion that we've done before. Um, that was just kind of fitting uh, for some of our lives. And so uh, I, I, if, if you just saw straight off of the Instagram, you, you probably saw the, uh, you, you saw the graphic. But today I really want to talk about, what up, Yaku? I really want to talk about uh, to being busy, being busy building your own house, right? When I say that, um, what do you think of? Right. Before you answer that in the chat, let's just go to our Lord and say, your father, God, thank you. Uh, thank you for this start of this week. God, thank you for uh, a renewing, a refreshing of our mind today. God, as we step into this week, God, we just ask that. God, you order our steps. Um, let us put things in order uh, from from how busy things are supposed to be to the things that are are just uh, disguises. Right. Um, distractions, God. So, God, we just ask that you speak through his word. Thank you for everybody on here. We say these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, being busy building your own house. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, I could actually I could actually give a, another uh, simile or a metaphor for like um, when you when you at the gym. Right. Some of us be so locked in at the gym. You just on the treadmill looking right here. Right. Then we have some of the distractions. Yes. Yes. Right. Same thing with building our own house. Right. Some of us are busy building our own house. Right. Tending to the business that's going to get me into the kingdom. Big facts, Shelby. Big facts. What up, girl? Right. Um, and this is from the archive. So I pulled this from the archive. Uh, what up, David? Matter of fact, let me just go through it. Adrian, I see you. Cardiac. Erica made it. Grace, you made it. Change the name, but you got it. Coach, you made it. Nacio, Paul Wally. Inez, how you feeling? Jessica, Melanie. Melanie got baptized this weekend. I was supposed to go, but I ended up at an AAU basketball game. But I was there in spirit, and I had a representative in Ty that was there. Phil, Riri, Shelby, Will, Yaku. What up, y'all? All right, progress. Progress. Um, the definition of progress is movement, like Shelby just said, toward a destination that's progress whatever your destination is a lot of times we, we don't even um look at our progress because we feel like we're not moving fast enough right All right but progress uh an effort in the right direction my own definition of it right so whatever your effort is if it's in the right direction you done made progress even in a loss yes yes right so movement towards a destination what up isaiah right movement toward a destination procrastination on the other hand is a noun we know a lot about we're talking about being busy building our own house right around here keep keep it focused keep it right here right uh procrastination is the action of delaying or postponing something right progress so now movement toward a direction or an effort in the right direction procrastination, delaying or postponing something, maybe in the direction you need to be going in. Yes, yes, right? In order to move toward what God got for you, Jen, Melanie, Phil, Riri, right? First, we got to let go of those distractions that keep us stuck in the same track, right? Stuck like Chuck, right? Some of our distractions um, we kind of talked about this stuff last week. Have us repeating the same thing day after day. We got to do the same thing for the same amount of thrill. We're really not looking for more. We say we want more, but we continue to do the exact same thing. Some people are, are throw in the definition of uh, insanity right there, right? Right. But here's how we disguise our distractions or disguise. Oh, let me say it like this. Here's how we disguise our procrastination. For some people that be like, I don't think I procrastinate that much, right? Here's how we disguise it. 
we wake up by sure yes yes how many people wake up fully conscious right laying in the bed wide awake some of us even say stuff like i can't go back to sleep right but we lay there but we say stuff like i'm just gonna get up in 15 minutes disguise your procrastination guilty guilty alarm go off or even wake up before the alarm fully conscious eyes closed aware of everything in the house in fact you lay in there and you running your day through your head i got this 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 to do i got to make this phone call oh i got to send that email oh today i got to go pick up this drop the boys off here right right fully conscious and we say stuff like i'm just gonna get up in 15 minutes right disguising our procrastination right here we go um we start thinking about those tasks that we got to get done and we say stuff like i'm i'm on my own street hey as soon as this go off i'm gonna get started <laughs> or i gotta find the right music i gotta find the right movie to get started right no we got something that need to be done at five o'clock today and we say man all right let me get this meal first Return his phone call, then I'm on it. Disguise your procrastination. Yes, yes. In the faith world, my good church folks, in the faith world, ooh, ooh, this one's going to hit. Instead of saying I'm about to start on this project or I'm about to make a decision, a lot of times we disguise this procrastination or fear by saying, I mean, just pray about it, or I'm praying about it. Now, I just hit somebody, and some people was like, nope, we got to pray first. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay to wait on God. It's okay to wait on God. But be honest with yourself. Sometimes, right, you use it as an excuse to not actually move. I'm just praying. I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray, right? God done told you 100,000 times, move, right? Right? Uh who is that 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 had the uh the cloth on the ground and said God make if it's wet in the morning and the dew around it? Who is that? One of my favorite. I can't even think about it this morning, right? Gideon, Mr. Gideon, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Right. Sometimes we just say, I'm just gonna wait on God. And God say, What you waiting on me for? I done told you three times, showed you four. Oh, that's the distraction, right? Some things God just told us, right? Don't even require the prayer. Think about how deep that is. Some stuff God done told you don't even require you talking back to God. Some stuff God done put in your heart, done really put in your spirit, you really want to, and gave you sign after sign after sign, right? And you just going to pray about it, and God say, hey, <laughs> I ain't talking to you no more. I'm on the melody. I'm on the cardiac now. I done told you, right? Right? Um, again, this is this is one of these, this is one of these uh devotions I've already written. And I wrote on here uh my assignment for building this Zoom call, right? Because if y'all remember in the beginning, my early people, this started as me doing this on the Instagram live while I was on the air. And then it started me just sharing what I wrote this morning. And then it started, now we here, right? And so I started asking myself, man, what's the overall goal of this joint, right? Overall goal of this morning meetup, right? Is to help us, inspire us, sometimes entertain us before we go out into this real world, right? So we can be armored up. That's That was my assignment on it. So I had to stop procrastinate it and actually just get to it get up even earlier uh study even longer right right because the last thing i want to do is say something that ain't from the bible that's the last thing i want that's the quickest way to lose 20 people on this month right right but then you start um wanting people to focus higher myself included right on god's standard right and then when when you start thinking about the things in your life that you want to focus on God's standard and you wanted to go farther and grow higher. You wonder why it grows slowly, right? Right. You wonder why some of the stuff that we do move slowly. Business, relationship, 
health, I'm those three topics I can always use. Wonder why when we create some, it don't immediately catch fire. Right? I, I put this down. People are not disobedient. A lot of times we are distracted when we're wondering why it grows slowly and it's not moving fast enough. A lot of times it's because we're distracted, right? I put life be happening, right? And then I actually put, and that's okay, right? It's okay that I got stuff that I know I need to be doing and life be happening and I'm trying to pivot and knock down hurdles over here to continue to let life be happening, right? Right? And I, I had to go find a scripture that actually said life be life and or life be happening. And it took me to Haggai 1 9. Again, this is a, a devotion we've done before. But if you if you missed that one back in the day, we in the book of Haggai. Hope I even said it right. H-A-G-G-I-A. -G -G Haggai. 1 9. Adrian Inez, you on here, put that up. Haggai 1 9. Haggai 1 9. Basically talking about spiritual matters over material pursuits, right? Right? Let me read to you what the Bible says, right? Haggai 1, 9. Bible says this, not your boy. It says this. Sometimes the Bible be talking. Sometimes the Bible be talking straight up to us. No, no fancy words, and some of us don't even receive it, right? But Bible, Haggai 1, 9 said this. You expected much. I could stop right there. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? You expected much, but it turned out to be little. What you bought, what you brought home, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you, all 20 of us, 21 of us, is busy with our own house. Right? On a Monday, y'all thought it was going to be something that was going to be <laughs> pump me up, motivated. And then this one is a mirror to be like, yo, I'm on my own agenda. I'm on my own plan. Right? How am I going to break this down to, to give you something good out of it? And sometimes we just got to hit you right in the face and be like, look at what we're doing. Right? One of the most, this off my notes, one of the most beautiful things about God is he give us a choice, right? He give us a choice. Now, what we do with it is on us, right? And then a lot of times we give, he give us that choice and we make the choice and then we say, where you at, God? That's, ain't that, okay, right? But God does know our dreams. Yes, yes, our desires, our goals, all of that, right? But ask ourselves, re re Phil, Ty, Melanie, Erica, David, ask ourselves, right? Um, how do we expect God to actually bless us with things that, that we want if we haven't buttoned up his, his thing first in our life, the thing God is calling you to, right? You know how easy it is to see somebody winning on a gram or see some a documentary on TV and say, I want that. How easy it is to do that? But then when God puts something in your heart, maybe you should be doing this, that, and the other. We struggle with those things that is gifted to us. Right? All right. Read it again. Haggai 1, 9. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be a little bit. What you brought home, I blew it away. Or made it go real, real slow. Why, declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains in ruin, while each of you is building your own house, right? I, I had this example. I had this example down. Um, you ever invested in so much, right? Put a lot of time in some stuff or in somebody and got a little bit back from them, maybe in a relationship, maybe as an, an, an employee or or... You praying for somebody and, and they just seem like they're not getting anybody. Maybe it's just me. Anybody invested in a lot in somebody or something? Anybody started a business in five, eight years? Is that much still? Right? Uh, I wrote this. 
when you start the process of anything without God at the center, just like we played that song, Jesus at the center, if God is not at the, at the center of whatever you start, thank you, Erica, if God is not at the center of whatever you decide to start, it's going to almost always end in disappointment. I can close the zoom right there. Whatever you start, if God, if your heart ain't in the right place when you start it, good luck. No matter how much energy, no matter how much talent, no matter how good you look, no matter how sincere you are about it, right? Right? If your heart ain't in the right place, right? Which is to, quote, serve others leave a legacy, if it's about how can I come up, what can I get out of it, who can I get over, how many people can look at me, and how many can people can pay me for this, trust me, it almost always ends in disappointment, right? Y'all seen them many, 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 many stories about celebrities who we deem on top and then that fall from grace. ESPN got 30 for 30 to tell you these documentaries all the time. Right. When you start a process of anything, yes, you might be talented at it. It might take you somewhere. Right. Your character will, will is what keeps you there. Where's your heart in it? Right. Right. Um, I wrote this down. <clears throat> God be asking us to do stuff a lot of times and we just ignore it or procrastinate or try to finesse it for whatever reason we do it. Right. We try to say, man, my conscience telling me that might be God talking to you in, in the form of your conscience. God be literally asking us to do stuff and we try to reason with it. All right, God. Um, ooh, here's an example off my notes. How many people have said or heard? Because I know it ain't none of us. Uh, I got to get right with the Lord before I do this. Right. I got to get right. I got to get right first. Right. We trying to finesse it or reason with it. Right. I gotta get this, I gotta get this little bit, last little bit out of me first. Right? Truth is, we can ask God all day long to bless something. We can ask God in every prayer with all of the tears flowing, right? Right? We can ask God with a with a real heart. God, I I'm I'm really leaning on you, God. Right? Right? We can really ask God to bless something. But when we not button up with his business first, or he not at the center of it, right? Right? Um, We're trying to get a, we, mm, how I want to say it? It's a hollow harvest. I wrote it like that, right? Right? We letting other things slide and, right? We accept and struggle. It's a hollow harvest. It's a hollow harvest, right? I wrote, here, here's my notes that I wrote after that. If you think about somebody who drinks a lot, right, or whatever, whatever you may be addicted to, right, you kind of just keep going to get that same feel over and over and over, right, trying to feel something. You're just trying to get that same, mm, you got to keep going, right? I wrote this. If we don't start with God at the center, we will forever wonder why um, we start some and reap a little bit or none of it, right? And we got to go back to our addictions to try to keep us going. If God ain't at the center, you will forever continue to go back to your addictions to try to fulfill something. My people who uh, need to fulfill love or need to fulfill, to try to get rid of a depression or try to, right, trying to mask it. If Jesus is not at the center, right, it ain't going away. Got me? Got me? We could try to do something with all the little power. We got all the little power and the skills of Rolodex that I got, little results, right? Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm at that point in my life now. All of a sudden, when we truly say, you know what? Because see, some of us will try to finesse God and be like, all right, God is up to you. But do it like this, right? But when we truly put Jesus at the center of it all, everything happens, right? How many of us have, 
accidentally prayed and 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 God blessed that prayer. But before you was praying, it wasn't that work, right? Here we go. Let's go back to the Bible. John 21, John 21, verse 4 through 6. Y'all know this story. This is a good Bible story. Bible's better than Netflix. Y'all know this story. Early in the morning, it's pretty early right now. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Y'all know this story, but the disciples did not even realize it was him, right? Who that over there, right? He called out to them and said, friends, I'm going to say it in my turn, Bible better than uh, Netflix. My boy, you ain't caught any fish yet? The Bible said it like this. He called out and said, friends, haven't you any fish? They answered, no, right? I'm asking Erica, cardiac, you came up yet? Adrian, has it popped off yet? What up, my boy? Y'all cool? Right? They answered no. Verse 6, he said, yo, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they listened to him, they were unable to haul in the net uh, because of the large number of fish. I wrote this down in all caps, and this is going to end it. I'm going to end it real early today. I put this, man, don't blow it. Drop that in the chat. Don't blow it, right? Don't blow it. Don't blow your opportunity. Finessing God, reasoning with God, right? Don't blow it. Don't blow it. Procrastinating with what God is telling us to do. He, this is how. This is what it looked like when, when we blow it. Anybody on here? By a show, yes, yes. Had a vision of something, an idea of something, right? And you sat on that mug, and then you flipped the TV, and the commercial come on, and the pet rock done made a gazillion dollars. I swear I had a pet rock before the commercial. Right? Right? Anybody ever seen somebody else do the same? Somebody was like, man, I used to do that same thing. Don't blow it. Right? Anybody anybody doing their thing on the gram or whatever and it's slow, so you stop and pivot and try to do something somebody else doing, and then next thing you know, you scrolling and see somebody blow up off the same thing you was doing. All right? Anybody start something before somebody else, they copy off of you and they do better than you did it. Right? I wrote this down. Don't blow it. Or the mood ring. Yes, don't blow it. When God is asking us to do something, don't be so busy building our own house, right? God asking us to do something. Don't procrastinate. On a Monday, 8 a.m., don't procrastinate. You know you need to be at work. Let's go, right? Don't reason with God, right? Don't finesse the situation. I'm talking to me right now. Even though this is an older devotion, I'm talking to me, right? Stop saying, okay, God, when I do this first, then I'm going to come back and God like, all right, go that way. I'm going to bless it right here. Whoever walking to it, that's when you start seeing the mood ring, <laughs> right? I put this down. God does not mind us chasing our desires and our dreams and our hearts. That's love, right? But let's just not get too busy building our own house that we don't button up the things he's asking us to do. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. If Jesus is not at the center, it's going to almost always end in disappointment. It can even take off. Because if Jesus is not there at the center, when it take off, you for sure going to be saying, ah, I did that. Look at what I did. Yes, yes. And then when it comes crumbling, every knee shall bow at every time so don't blow it don't blow it uh that's literally all i have for this and this is a good repeat uh of a devotion let's just go to our lord and savior father god thank you um for being in the house that we're trying to build um god thank you for having uh plans for a home that we're trying to build in our lives god we just ask that um, as we start today that god we just keep you at the center we actually check our heart god on the things that we're asking for no matter what it is, resources, finances, health, check our heart on the situation, God, and just um, reflect on the things that you are giving us and let us look at how we are doing with the things that you are already giving us, God. It's a reflection morning, God. I hope that we are humble enough to see ourselves in it. Um, God, we just ask that you bless us through it. 
We say these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Microphones open. Microphones open. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got off before even Jen pulled up to work. That's what's up. That is what's up. Um, hey Amen. I can tell them about the campaign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. The which campaign? Yeah, Ty. You can tell them. I don't care. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I had to go on that. Um, good morning, everybody. Before everybody jump off, I just wanted to let you guys know. So Bless Beats will be having an eight-day campaign the week before Thanksgiving. Um, if you are interested in being a part of this eight-day campaign, the campaign itself is called Faith in Action. And it's basically um Bless Beats and a team of volunteers are coming together to actually uh move in faith with helping out people in a community, being a part of certain events and actually having our own events um, um, for everybody. So if you're interested, um, I'm going to ask you guys to please send me a message. Uh, Marcus, can you put the Bless Beats email in there? Please, yeah. um, guys, email me your name, your information. Yeah, I'm sorry, name and information. And if you are interested in being a volunteer, we need as many volunteers as possible. Um, I got Yaku working on creating us a logo for Faith in Action um, for us to get shirts made. If you cannot do every day out of the eight days, um, that's fine. Just whatever day you feel like you'll be able to participate in. <clears throat> the dates for that is November 17th through the 24th. So as a Sunday through the Sunday. Again, if you guys are what interested. Kind of, huh? What kind of stuff is happening on these days? So we have eight different days. One of the days we're going to be teaming up with another community leader, helping them out with their events that they have going on. We also have an event that I'm trying to put together um, called Pre Pit P, which is prayer in the park. Um, we also have, it's like a lot of different things, guys, but I can fully discuss it with you all um, on a Zoom call with everybody who's choosing to be a volunteer. I know um, I'm letting you guys know ahead of time. So in case you have to look at your schedules, but again, you would just put like your name, your email, your phone number, and just say, I would like to be a volunteer uh, of Bless Beats A Day campaign. Um, and I'm going to say this, guys, Here's the blessing in that. I've had so many people from the Zoom reach out and say, man, I want to be a part of Blessed Beats. How can I serve? How can I help? This is your chance and your opportunity to help. God is shifting the platform of Blessed Beats. Um, he's adding a lot of different things. So uh, the fact that he gave me the name Faith in, um, Faith in Action is such a powerful movement. So I'm just asking whoever would like to be a part of it, even if you have family members and other people you may know, uh, I'm trying to get at least up to 30 volunteers. So it'd be a blessing if y'all come on board with Bless Beats and be very supportive uh, to the movement Marcus and I have going on. That's it. That's it, my girl. Uh, Harvey, I don't know if you're still in Hawaii, but welcome back if you're not. 